Thank you. Okay, got I it. Think, I think we have got it. Okay. I think we have everybody here but Paul and Pam, and hopefully they will join us. Um, I sent, Mary did the minutes. There was just a very short meeting before the University of Hartford presentation uh, in December. Um, does anyone have anything that they want to change or alter to the minutes? I have one thing and it's really just nuance, but I think it's, it's worth doing under 3A. Mary, you want me to wait so you can look at that? Um, sure. Let me okay, it so it's 3A. It's under yeah. the Keisha Farm Barn. The last, sent last two sentences are makes us eligible for other grants. The grant could be used. And I think it should say makes us eligible for other grants that could be used. Uh, okay. And it's, it's a slight change of meaning, but the grant we got is to actually apply for the historic designation. I think what Jim was saying is then we would be uh, able to apply for other grants <clears throat> as well. Right, List, listing makes us eligible. <clears throat> and this is research to fill out the application, uh, right. which they look for more completeness than just it's an old barn. Okay, uh, so okay. Yeah, are there any other changes to the minutes? No, all right, can I take a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Thank you, Dan. Can I get a second? Second. All right. You have your choice, Mary Jim. <laughs> I think Jim was first. <laughs> All right, good. All right, thank you. Okay, open issues, old business, um, the barn. Oh, Pam is calling me. Hang on for one minute. Let's see. Hi, Pam. How are you? You're. You can't get in. Um, let me. Do you have? Let me give you the number. No, we got in by Zoom. Do you want to call in? Wait, wait. Bo Bonnie, no, can um, Pam, Pam can't get in, and she's saying it, it just has a call in. Hang on, hang on. Bonnie's talking to Cheryl, and she's saying if maybe you're in the waiting room. Click on that. Okay. I think she's coming. Okay, you're here. All right. All right. We're done. All right. Pam's in. Oh. Excellent. All right. All right. Thank so you. Pam is here. Welcome. We already um, approved the minutes as amended. That's all we've done so far. So welcome. And I want to welcome Dan O'Connor too. I can see him on the screen. Yeah, and hello. We'll, hello. And we'll uh, we'll speak to that in a minute. Um, the historic, uh, the barn grant. Uh, Jim, do you want to speak to that? You and I were both at the meeting on 1220. Well, it was approved. And uh, I think uh, I have to defer to Bonnie to see if anything's happened since then. All Nothing. signed, all signed, Jim, sealed and mailed and done, and they've got all the paperwork. Awesome. Jim. All right. So next step, Bonnie, is we'd wait to hear from you as to what, if they need us to be there, meet there, provide them with research, anything. Okay. Exactly. Mary will keep me posted. She's been great. All right, good. That was terrific. It was passed on a 7-2 vote, and so they accepted the grant, and we are on, we'll, we'll see what they say after they do the research. Thanks, okay, Dan. So the yeah. University of Thanks Hartford. You guys. Sorry. Uh, 3B, the University of Hartford report. Um, that was the subject of the, the last meeting, really, on 12 6. And I wanted to share a few things with you from their report so that it will kind of give us direction for the next couple of months of work, I think, basically. So let me just share the screen with you. And let's see what should be first. Um, okay, let's do this one first. Okay, so if, if we kind of start here, this was the analysis that they did of the three listening sessions that we held, and those were all virtual. And um, people came on Zoom like we are tonight and shared their um, their ideas with us and then they were tabulated and then the University of Hartford put them together into that pie chart. So that's the first thing that they shared at the um, town council meeting. 
All right, and then the second thing was the, this one. Okay, so this was the result of the survey, the responses to the question on what are your preferred options for um, the use of the farm. And I should preface this by saying that 77% of the respondents want to see multiple things going on on the property. So there was no, there was no desire to just have it be one thing. And they responded in this manner. So you can see that, that the preferred options are down here with the numbers of people voting. All right, and so now, of course, we've lost our consultant, but what I was able to do is I took 170 people who wanted, for example, sports fields here, and then I added it to the, the people that uh, said the same thing in the listening sessions, and then I combined them, and so this is what we have. So this is the community input from both the listening sessions and the survey result, and it represents 682 contacts with the public um, and the community. And this is basically the direction that they asked us to try to look at on their behalf. And so if you can't see this, I can't, I couldn't alter the size of this because it was the University of Hartford um, template, but you can see 29% preferred some kind of sports um, activities. The second the second highest was this gray, which was gardens. And that's a combination of gardens and farming. All right. And then the third was 24% at open space. Um, do I have that right? No, I'm oh, sorry. 24% is walking trails. So it went sports, farming and gardens, walking trails. 15% was open space and 5% of the respondents. Um, wanted some kind of educational programming on the farm. The other respondents, the, there were just very few, they were in different categories. And these are the final numbers right here. So you can see that the, the, the public really came out and expressed their opinions as to what they, the, the kind of a combination of things that they would like to see on the property. Cindy, I took a screenshot, I'll put that in the minutes. Oh, good, okay. And I, um, I sent all these, documents to Bonnie and so they should be in the public record there too. So there'll be a town hall as well as in our minutes. That's great. I can send you the document too if you want. So I'm using this as the stepping stone for moving forward to, and uh, I'd welcome any of your thoughts. Well, I had I mean, mentioned to you, Cindy, about something. I had some ideas. Yes, I've uh, got that. I have a a, um, a subcommittee for that, Pam. If you're if you're interested. Okay. okay. So for meeting goals, I thought we might adopt Dan O'Connor. <laughs> That's one of my meeting goals. <laughs> you know. Um, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> so this is what Dan said. All those in favor? Hi, <laughs> raise your hand. <laughs> All right. This is this is the benefit of it. At at the meeting, Dan said that he is well aware that youth programs are willing to be part of this process. Um, they're willing to front some costs for maintenance. They're willing to pay costs for use. But I think at this point in our process, after two years and the survey and the listening sessions. We're ready to invite someone from the town council to help us with the process. I think it would be of great benefit to us. And, and you know, he would bring a perspective that we don't have right now. And then he could see the all the information available to us from the listening sessions and the survey and kind of craft something together. So if, if people find that to, to be as appealing yeah, as they do, I think we just yeah. welcome Dan to be our town council liaison for the next six months or so. If that Welcome, works. Dan. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Officially adopted. <laughs> All right, good. All right, so what I thought we should do is form some subcommittees because that seems to be the most efficient way to work. I mean, Pam did a great job with the survey subcommittee. We have a, a, a the opportunity now to create committees based on what the public told us. So if you 
if you want me to put the pie chart back up or can you kind of recall what it said? Yeah, I got it. Okay, so these were the committees that it, it seemed to suggest. So we have recreation active, that's all the sports. We have recreation passive, that's walking trails and open space. We have gardens and farming, all right? We have some form of education. And then the one thing that is was not on the pie chart, but is of real concern and we can't ignore is the community concerns. You know, how what were people worried about when they answered the questions? And there were the, the three top ones were traffic, the monetary cost, and the maintenance of the property. So that seems to be a whole other subcommittee, community concerns. And then finally, the operational model. You know, how will this function? How will it? How will it function within our community? And so what I thought we could do tonight was to try and create those, there are six of them, six subcommittees with chairs and kind of um, ideas going forward as to how you, know, you can then operate independently and bring the work back to the committee at, at, you know, in a month, in two months, you know, however long it takes you. Bonnie, does that sound like a good model for the committee? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, just I would say try to be as distinct as you can with the committees. Do you know, you, you don't want to. It's like you don't want to have too many. Sometimes too many can uh, bog down the system. Okay, could you? Could I don't you even. Think, I don't sorry. even know if we have. A, I don't know if we have enough people for six committees. Cynthia. I know that's the other. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Let's combine some of them then. Yeah. Well, so when you say committees, in what form? I mean, I, I understand the breakdown of the survey, but what is the ultimate goal that comes out of the committees? So the, the ultimate goal, I would think, is to present the final preferred option to the town council in four to six months based on the community input that we got. Knowing and that it's a, a constantly evolving thing, correct? Yeah, I mean, but Dan, um, I think, and I think you'd agree, council's expecting a report within a six month period. Of, Here's what we think um, you should be doing with Keisha, yeah. correct? Yep. Okay. What, Dan, would you think four months or six months? What would you think would be reasonable? Well, I, I mean, I think you guys have been at this for two years, right? Mm -hmm. So like my attitude is I don't think there's gonna be a lot of effort to figure out in these subcommittees what you all want because i think a lot of you've already put that time and energy in and so my attitude is i would shoot for sooner rather than later and let's get the ball moving on that you know so because not, it's kind of like four months turns into six months turns into a year okay. and my attitude is you know we had the presentation they came in they you know they showed what they did let's take that momentum and keep pushing forward and not let this be one of those things that like, you know, and, and this, Mike, you can relate to this. Look, look how long it took to get the lights and turf. You know, exactly. we had that great momentum, but then, you know, it just got slower and there was, you know, discourse and all of that. Well, the longer it goes, too. The longer it goes. Yeah. And so I would say shoot for a shorter time frame. And, you know, and I agree with Bonnie on that, you know, fewer committees. I mean, you could... Literally, if you look at the top three, the sports field, the walking and the garden farming, you know, you have three committees because you can even fit open space into that garden and farming as well and really just have three subcommittees and let them each kind of get their own report and say, all right, here's what we'd like to see. And, you know, and then you've basically covered 90% of what people are asking for anyway. And wouldn't, wouldn't the under farming, wouldn't, you know, even a, a operating model because that's still considered farming if that that's within the scope of like figuring out what what capacity of farming we would do would you agree cindy i mean i know it's a big effort but i kind of agree i think i like those three top and then you could you could also encompass other other pieces of it okay i i, I love the suggestion this isn't what you want this is how we're doing it we already did what do you want for two years so now we're going to try and say, we know what they want. This is how they're going to do it. So tell me what the three you suggest. Recreation, yes. both active and passive. Just put it together. Yes. Everything having to do with the use of the property. In Okay, that's one committee. All right, that's good. All right. Um, gardens and farming and 
education and operational model. That's the second committee. Does that include the barn? Where does the barn go? That's a good I would point. put that. I would put that under education. Yeah, I would. Okay. And and uh, obviously in farming too, because that's a that's a yeah. uh, agricultural infrastructure. Right. <clears throat> okay, so. Committee one is re all recreation, active and passive, sports, fields, walking trails, and open space. Committee two is gardens, uh, community gardens, farming, educational opportunities, the barn, and the operational model. And then committee three is the community concerns, which I think we need to address. I mean, as, as people are talking about anything going on there, we have to talk about how does it impact the neighborhood? How, what will it cost the town? You know, and that, the, we, we have to be... So could that be the third committee? I think that that, that's, that's an important aspect, but it seems like uh, traffic concerns are beyond our scope. That has to be, I don't know, Dan was talking about possibly a grant to deal with that. That has to be a professional thing. Oh yeah, Derek, uh, would have, uh, Derek our engineer is gonna have to give, give input to the subcommittee, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah I just, I just wanted to say, just because I live right next door to Keisha, is that that was a major concern of all the neighbors that live near me is the traffic and how that's going to be resolved if there are sports fields um, over there. It's almost like you have to tie it to the things where it would be most, I don't know. I mean, the, the committees who are looking at sports fields have to, all of the committees have to consider that almost, right? depending right. on what you're recommending. So maybe we just encompass that as part of the charge for each subcommittee. Yeah. But but I, I do like if the research is it would be nice to have one person sort of uh you know coordinate all of the research that's done around that because it's the same information. It just depends on the scope of the activity and and things like that. So, so I, I don't haven't... know I have another screen to share with you from the key, from the University of Hartford report that maybe everybody will just take into account as, as they're working. Um, you remember, and Dan, what we had was a soil analysis done by one of the members of the Kip Colasinkus. Oh, let me just move this down a little bit. It works, yeah, it works for UConn. He's a soil expert. Okay, so this, this map was created by the University of Hartford to represent what he did and gave to us in writing. And I can share that with everybody again, if you've lost it. Um, the, the key isn't great, but what they did was they, they showed this is, this is the wetland area and you can see it. This is, they superimposed it on the geo map from uh, Weathersfield. So this is the wetland area north of Highland. And then this is the, ho the house and this is the, good agricultural soil. He said, this is um, this would be great for vegetables and or fruit trees. And he said, this was the soil that was less productive and suggested that this might be the best place for recreational fields. This was Kip Colasinkus now. This does not have to be us, but at least it gives a, a blueprint for where things can go. South of Highland Street, and ignore all these little drawings here. That's the University of Hartford, and I couldn't erase that but this is excellent agricultural soil. And this is in front of the barn and behind the barn where the greenhouse is. And then this is back here somewhere is the walnut grove and this is high crest. So I think everybody, if we all just keep this in mind and then we worry about traffic and um, you know the model that we'll use to operate this so that it will be of less burden perhaps to the, of no burden. Actually, that's the goal, did, no burden did, to the community. Did, did University of Hartford ever reference or discuss where parking would go? Oh yes, wait a minute, they did. Because, um, you know, just that? getting people off of Highland Street is an improvement. Right, so, so there's a stoplight right here, if I'm correct, is that right? Fine, yeah. Right here? Yeah. Yep. And so their thought and all was that the access for this part of the farm would come through the back here so that people wouldn't be parked on the street anymore. I don't know if this will ever come to fruition, but Dan, isn't the plan to move Highcrest School up to the front? Yeah, I have Bonnie may know more about that. I mean, that's, you know, that's 
kind of pie in the sky stuff. I mean, a referendum oh, yeah. got get passed. Okay. But, always, 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 always look at the worst case scenario and say that Highcrest is sticking where it is. Okay. So the parking lot for Highcrest is right here. So on the south side of Highland, the access could be through the back. So nobody is parking on the street. And then north of Highland, um, you can't really encroach on these wetlands, but the, the goal would be to move. This is the road that exists right now, the dirt road. And so to move parking in the back. Can they have they have it right here. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, yeah. But the goal was to move it off the street. So potentially there could be no parking on the street. I mean that's Cindy, can you Cindy, can you go back to the uh, on the north side where you said they were gonna come in on the the back side of High Crest? Yeah. How are they gonna cross though? Because it's wetlands. Well, believe it or not, they must have paved over the wetlands here. There's a parking lot back here. No, understood. There is a parking lot there, but I don't think it intrudes as far as that right. as, as we think. Okay, so would, we'd have to see if we could access the back through the back. You know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. And I don't know either. You know, someone would have to walk it or see. Okay. You know, I mean, and they have community gardens up in front here, but this was, they, they did this based on the listening sessions. That's mm -hmm. why I tried to put ignore this. This yep. was just based on listening sessions. But at least it shows you what we're working with. Right. Cindy, just uh, could I just add a little caveat to your the uh, the brown area on the right there that you said was poor soil? That's not really true. Only the first maybe half of it closest to Highland Street is the part that the MDC ruined and and stole the topsoil. After that halfway mark, which is clear when you walk out into the field, uh, there's another farm road that kind of divides there. That back part is good soil. And maybe the so, best part because it's the best drain area right so there. Right here. That's correct. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> anyway, that's okay. No, that's good to know. Yeah. Is, um, Cindy, is the right of way for um, Norton's utility is right next to where that brown part is? Where is you it? know, it would be helpful to to see a Google map. Because then you can see where that parking lot is. Yeah. So this but is also, the street, Dan, right here. Yeah. And the houses back up here. And this is the right of way right here. Okay. So there's there's actually a part of Keisha. Oh, I'm not sure now. Yeah. So I have to look at the other Keisha map. So there I brought this up before, but there may be an opportunity uh, where Northeast Utilities would let us put parking along that side there. Right. Um, That'd be great. Well, we should pursue now, it. I mean, it's something we can ask them. They can always say no. Um, mm -hmm. And I think from what I heard was, uh, as long as you don't pave it over. So if you put like a gravel, whatever, um, which would be fine, um, that would probably save a little space somewhere. So it's, um, I, I think I said this before, my wife's cousin was the one in charge of it. And he's the one that told me about it, and, but he's retired. So I would have to get a name at Northeast Utilities if we wanted to first. just ask. We can just ask. If they say no, they say no. But maybe that'll give us a little more land to, um, you know, to, to deal with where we won't have to uh, put parking. Is that purchased property from them? Well, no. They Well, they own it, but they would just let us use it for parking. Yeah, until they need to use it. And then, you know, they, yeah, yeah they've done it with other towns. So it's, I don't know that we do it, but I think it's something we ask about. Here, here, are, here at the Mill Point Condos, our side yard is actually under, under the lines and the, and the utility owns it. And we have an easement to use it mm -hmm. for what that's worth. Yeah. All right, so let's fill these subcommittees. I, I, I think I, I like the sense of, of you know, empowerment that we're having here. Let's fill them. Um, Mike, you were in charge of the sports, uh, the use of the fields and trying to determine what we needed and what was possible. Would you yep. continue on that? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Um, yep. Dan, will you join him? Yep, absolutely he will. Yep. Yeah, yep. I, but, but I, I would be a silent observer because I think as a council liaison, I really can't guide or direct, so... Although, and I know Mike needs lots of guidance and direction, but I will do my best. She meant Silva, not you. <laughs> oh, sorry. 
Wrong Dan. Exactly. All right, just checking. Just checking. <laughs> You know, Dan, maybe you would be willing to sit in on all all three committees just to kind of have a, I know it's a lot, but we're a good group. We're a lot of fun. And uh, we we would keep it, you know, <laughs> we're at this point, we're trying to be creative, but your input would mean a lot. Can you not comment at all? Oh, I mean, obviously I can comment. But Bonnie, you probably know. Yeah, he can comment, but he can't say, you need to do X, Y, and Z. Okay. Because that's your job, not to tell, not to have a council member dictate. Okay. But he could right. say, why don't you do X, Y, and Z? <laughs> or have you ever thought about doing it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's all the way This is say. what you should do, but don't quote me. <laughs> so, Dan Silva, would you mind joining that too? Because that just seems to be something that you've got. I mean, you've got the field condition reports and yeah, I mean, you've got the recreation perspective. Yeah. No, I, I'll definitely join Mike on. Uh, okay, great. Yeah. Mike, didn't um, didn't Paul Asella do a like a great like document? He did. Where he talked I ha about I have that. I have that. Some he had a okay. great doc. Absolutely. Okay. I was thinking that when 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 uh, Dan was talking that I, I got to find what that is. That was awesome. Okay. So you and you would. I mean, I'm not dividing this up. You know randomly but i think he would be great if he mm -hmm. you know has the time i know this isn't a great time five o'clock for him but yeah okay how about um mary i mean that's the same committee that's going to include walking trails and open space and i mean would you be willing to to work with that too as a neighbor and someone that's interested sure. in that okay yep. all right that's great all right so that's four Okay, gardens and farming and education and the barn and the model. All right, that's got Jim written all over it. <laughs> I got that, although I like the walking trails too. So that's, I mean, not just well, to I, comment on that. I was thinking about you, Jim, that that would be helpful if you wanted, to, I don't know if you can be on too. <laughs> well, I can. Definitely can if you have the time, that's fine. But we wanna move quickly. So, so Jim, yes. I would definitely like to join that because that's, education and kind of yes. the whole operation of it. We've mm -hmm. been trying to think how to make yeah, it yeah. nonprofit and all that. Um, Pam, we had been talking and you were going to kind of get us all excited about something I know, but would you be willing to work on that too? Because that's the whole piece, like all the different activities and educational yes. opportunities that sure. could exist on the farm. All right. So that's Jim and Cindy and Pam. All right. Um, Tara, Community concerns make so much sense for you because of your, <laughs> well, because of your location yes. and the fact that you have neighborhood groups that you can speak to and. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. I'm not going to be all by myself, am I? <laughs> no. Let's, um, Jenna, where do you see yourself more, most effective? I was going to raise my hand for that second group, but if Tara needs a friend, I'll be Tara's friend. Oh, I would love a friend. <laughs> And I will I definitely, I will help you too, Tara. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and uh, Tara, you can always pull me in too as a neighbor. Yes. Okay, so awesome. Mary and Jenna and Tara. Okay, so let, let, let's just go over this. So for recreation, both active and passive, we've combined it. We're gonna, we're gonna keep that um, topographical map in mind when we're making ideas and suggestions. So we've got sports fields, walking trails, and open space. I've got Mary, Dan, Dan, Mike, and hopefully Paul, if, you know, if, if he can, if he can join, you know, the-, the... I, 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 will, I will reach out to Paul. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, and then the second group will be the community gardens, the farming, the education piece, and the operational model. So that's Jim, Cindy, Pam, um, Jenna, I'm going to put you in there because you make a great apple pie. <laughs> you, you, there should be some. There should be some way we can get that in here. All right. So that would be Jenna, and then for Tara, community concerns. Tara, Jenna, Mary, and I will also join you because I remember the consultant saying that was one of the most important pieces in your final preferred option that you have heard the community not just about what they want, but what they're afraid of too. So um, the consultant we picked, if you remember, was going to do drawings of how every single thing would look if you were on the street. And I thought that was one of the, 
the best perspectives I've heard, like how will this look to someone driving down the street or to a neighbor? So, mm. all right, so we've got three committees. I like it. What's our time frame? What are we gonna try and accomplish? How fast? Yeah. We only you know, meet once a month. I know that's subcommittees can meet on their own. Subcommittees can meet. Bonnie, what's the rule on subcommittees? Four? Uh, as long as you don't have a majority. So four, it's a subcommittee, five, it's a meeting? Yep. Okay. Okay. Did so. you mean do you mean quorum or a majority? Well, yeah, quorum. Yes. Quorum, yeah. You okay. just don't want a quorum. All right. So four. <laughs> So they have to be public if there's five? Yes. Okay. And there have to be minutes if there's five. Am I right, Bonnie? Because we have, yes. yep. have five, you know, we have them. Most of them are five. Tom, and how many see. community gardens? How many people are on that? See the, the number two community gardens, it's for Jim, Cindy, Pam, and Jean, Jenna. Um, the recreation is heavy with Mike, Dan, Dan, uh, possibly Paul, myself, and, and I think, Jim, you weren't. You ended up not going on that. So well, certainly, uh, yeah, for the talking about the open space and the trails and stuff. <clears throat> but Dan O'Connor doesn't really. Um, he doesn't count. Yeah. Okay. Count. That's I was true. trying to find a better way to say that. Yeah, he, won't he just right. doesn't I hear count. That all the time. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. So then it's four. Back down to four if Paul joins. Okay, okay good. <clears throat> all right. So we only meet once a month but the subcommittees can now kind of get together you can meet on zoom we can meet and talk i mean all the university of hartford information is available did did you have any luck accessing I, it i couldn't i don't know did i don't know if i'm just being thick but i couldn't figure that out how to okay, access so do you have a google account yeah okay so when you go to it you change from your um uh, google address you change to keisha well, wait a minute, I wrote it down. Oh, okay. All right. You I'll just try. change it there. And then the password is Keisha Farm one or something. Oh, and I okay. need that sent to me. <laughs> I will send it to you. Okay. I will send it to you. You just change and you log in as a different, you know, a different login. So you need to do a password and everything to that. That would be helpful. Yes. I have Might as well copy it to us all because I how deep is it buried? Yeah. Yeah. I will do it for everybody. And all of um, the other thing that's there, and I didn't want to, uh, I wanted to ask Bonnie her advice first is all the comments that were made, 275 people actually made comments on those surveys. I think it's important that they're read. I don't know, what I didn't know is, do you want them published? Some are anonymous and some aren't. I, and I don't know, I, I didn't want to do that until I had your input. Published where? Uh, that's what I mean. I mean, if we put them on. No, no, no. Oh, you mean on the site so that people could. I don't think them? we made it clear to them that we were going to publish that. No, we never said anything about that. That's why it could be an internal. Do have permission to do something like that? Am I wrong? Could we, could we take the names off and just put it, the comments anonymously? Oh. Yeah, why I think it's good. That would be good. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look at how they. Uh, put it on the um, in the presentation, but it's called market analysis, and it's very very interesting to look at. I mean, especially it's one of the reasons that community concerns is resonating so much with me tonight because I went through and read all of them, and people are concerned. And you know, a successful res you know a successful option will address those concerns. So, Bonnie, if I can find a way to take all the names, or if all, none of the names are obvious, then we can. I'll access that too. Yeah, yeah, and um, if you have an issue, Cindy, I can ask Cheryl or IT. Okay. And Cindy, right. did the did the University of Hartford team any uh, quantify that in any way, or because it probably would be useful for all of us to read it uh, to get a mm -hmm. sense? Um, the way they quantified it was those word maps or word clouds. Uh, gotcha. And okay. So, and that's not quantifiable the way I think of it, but. Mm -hmm but it, it well, showed you what print. was most important. And then the pie chart, yeah. the pie chart actually showed you the, the essence of what people were asking for. So they did a pie chart mm -hmm. for concerns. They did a pie chart for preferred options. Okay, so there's both are there. 
but the word cloud was the way they presented it to the town council. The people's oh. words are more powerful. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. They're more powerful. <laughs> okay, so what's the time frame? What do you think? How how can Okay. How fast can we work on something like this? Well, I mean, when is our deadline to present to town council? Well, if, I mean, really, if you go no longer than six months, then that's what you got to back into. So figure about, that two, two have already gone by because the presentation was December 6th. And now this, there's this month. So let's, say, let's say we try and present, we have the month of January, the month of February, the month of March. Let's try and we present May, the first town council meeting in May. Dan, budget? Dan, I don't know the budget schedule. When when do you guys do the budget? When do you get into it? Not as much our side. Um, I think it's in March when we start deliberations. If I recall. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it, it probably would make sense to have once the budget is done. I think it gets voted on in May, right? May 15th, I think, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, last year you went into June, but yeah, it should be May. Yeah, and so, I mean, like there's a part of me that would like to, I would think we'd want to get the seeds planted and then, but we don't want to co-mingle it with the budget. Right. Because that's, you know, there's going to be an expense and we don't want to add that to a budget. It's better off not dealing with that, but planting that seed and then coming back to the council, you know, asking for funds in essence after the budget as opposed to before. Because if you do it before, there's gonna be a tax increase. So you kind of want to avoid that and not make it from that aspect at least right away. It would just be kind of a thought. So are you saying uh, so, after May 15th? Wait well, I, I, I think it would be neat to have a preliminary report you know, early April to share okay. and say, here's where the suggestions and ideas they are going to do some fine tuning and everything. And they'll present to the council after the budget. Okay. And uh, we might have some documents by then say a traffic survey or however yeah. that might work, work itself out. <clears throat> so, so the dates again, I just want to make sure I get the goal would be early April, April, for a preliminary. Yeah. The council meets on the first and third Monday, so we would aim to present something April 18th. Is that That's is that actually before the council starts deliberating a budget? Just this would be the preliminary though, right? Yeah, Just a we still want it to be, we, we don't want to get on the same agenda with the budget. So I would never do that. that. I wouldn't let you do that, Jim. If, yeah, I'm, but if it, I'm even here, that's the other thing, because that's going to be a time period where the council's also going to be involved with the manager's interview. Yeah. 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 Bonnie, you've been an incredible help to us. Do you think we should move this to um, March? I mean, you've been involved in this now for several months. I mean, if you can, that'd be great. Okay, that would give us eight weeks, March 7th, yeah. before the budget starts, the budget process starts, Monday, March 7th, do some kind of little preliminary presentation of a preferred option. Yeah. Or or our meeting so that we could prepare for March 18th or whatever the Yeah, and second. by then I'll, I'll have a better feel for the agendas and, you know, what they're looking like. And, you know, this one's doesn't have many items. This one's packed. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Okay. Sounds good. All right, so let's aim for March 7th. I, I mean, I we do know, now we're just saying how we do it. So this is some. This is something we should be able to put together, especially with the great committees that we have. <laughs> Any other comments or questions on that? Time frame? Goals? No, I think that's good. All right, thanks. Are we allowed to contact each other by phone to set up? Yes. Yep, absolutely. And, and, and what about email? Are we... Yes, right? Yeah. Bonnie, that, that, as long as you stay below the quorum, that's the thing. Yes. Okay. Okay, um, moving on correspondence. We got one piece of correspondence, which I forwarded you to, uh, to you in December, which you probably, um, I don't know if you read it or not, but it is was a 
from Susan Reed, who was a professor at the University of Hartford, and she sat in on several of our meetings. Uh, she applauded the work of the committee, and she sent us two more farms that are 501c3s um, and that are in Connecticut. So we've written roots and gifts of love. So two more farms that we can take a look at. Um, did, you send, did you send that to us, Cindy? I did. In December, no. though, Jim. She reached out in December. I can send oh. it again. Yes, please. I remember seeing that. New Britain Roots and um, Gifts of Love. And then the University of Hartford uh, also included Holcomb Farm, which I believe is in Granby, which is another great nonprofit Connecticut farm. And I'm hoping maybe the Connecticut models will be well received. Yeah. We'll have to do some serious field tripping here. Yeah. All right. Other business. Dan, did you want to talk about the ARPA funds at all? You had a, you, you know, I know you spoke in front of the council and you did a great job. Dan Silva. I talked to Dan uh, on it as well. Um, but um, we're hoping that maybe the site plan, and maybe other things will fall under the funds. Um, not sure if they do or not. We think they do. Um, so that's certainly a concern. I think the most important thing we can do is get a plan together. And then what we did with the Millwood's master plan is um, after the plan came together, you had different groups coming saying they wanted to do different things. And uh, it didn't cost the town a lot of money. It was these groups of the course of 25 years that uh, you know developed a lot of the things at Millwood. So that, that was my thought. And certainly if we can get the money, great. But I think the most important thing we can do is get a a site plan and uh, get some groups to buy in. Um, you know, hopefully if the site plan costs us money, if the, the town engineer can't do it, or if we have to get a consultant to do it, then I was hoping that those funds could be used for that. I don't know what Dan thinks. I, I think we're still trying to fully um, understand where these funds can and can't be used. You know, it's, it's my belief, and again, I'm only one of nine, and I'm not a lawyer, is that we can take advantage of these funds on these types of uses. And so it is my hope that we can use some of these funds to do this entire project, if not all of them. And so that would be what I would obviously try to advocate and get support for. But again, you know, there's a lot of nuances to where we can and can't spend the money it's how you word it and all of that and so that's one where our council is going to have to look at it and you know bonnie correct me if i'm wrong to make sure that those funds are going by the letter of the law yeah there's two pots of money uh in fact a council meeting i'm going to be talking about it tonight but um i don't think it would be questionable if you would go if you would be able to get covid arpa monies that's one pool but there's also a larger pool of money called lost revenues, and you definitely would fit under that. The problem is when you see the list I have tonight, I've overspent the lost revenue amount, and these are just suggestions, by quite a lot of money. That's how much of a demand there is for, the, for these funds. And that's where the council gets to make those fund decisions. Well, it was a great, great of you, Dan, to suggest that at the meeting, you know, to, and it was definitely a result of COVID that we did not have a consultant and that we did not have a site plan or survey or, I mean, you made a good point there. That was a direct consequence of the, uh, of COVID. So um, Dan, Jim, you, you reached out to somebody too, didn't you? You sent us a, you copied us on a, on a letter. Well, I, I did. I, I sent an email to the Masaro Community Farm in Woodbridge, which is a, uh, nonprofit uh, organization, just like we were thinking about, very very similar to Newton uh, Community Farm, and may have been me mentioned in some of the other uh, consultant uh, reports. Uh, I, I I threw them all away, but <laughs> it may be out there somewhere. Uh, and uh, I I just sent the letter today, the email yesterday, and it's uh, the third of January, so they're probably really off 
uh, off season. I didn't get an answer back yet, but, but that's, and that's only 40 minutes away. Um, and that's the one that Kip Polosinskis suggested also as a parallel uh, alternative for us. Um, I want to mention one other possibility for information. Um, there's a, a uh, something called an environmental review team, which is chaired by Gene Davies, who's part of the Connecticut, State of Connecticut Economic and Development Conservation something something. I forget the exact name of her thing, but we had a, one of those for our wood parcel. And she put together like eight or seven or eight experts from various um, disciplines to look at the environmental uh, <clears throat> qualities and we had some very actionable uh, information from the forester. But those kinds of information would be very useful for our uh, wetlands area in particular. Uh, they also said, <clears throat> uh, Kip Kolosinskis and other people uh, for an agricultural survey. So we've kind of done some of that already, but, but they sent a soils person and a wetlands person, and a forester, and all that, uh, our wetlands area, which I understand was pasture for the Keisha farm, which would help to explain why there's so many invasive species down there. Um, and something that, you know, over years, maybe with volunteer or whatever, or with grants, we could improve that environment. Uh, but definitely we can, we can get some trails going with volunteers or Boy Scouts or whatever, whatever. <clears throat> and I should, one of the things that I was thinking was a little broader uh, focus because the other half of that wetlands going over to Prospect Street is owned by the um, golf club. And, um, there's no reason why they wouldn't, wouldn't uh, they don't want it. They can't use it for golf, uh, but certainly for passive recreation, for, for uh, trails going through there uh, could be done. And then if you're looking at a farm operation, the Wilkes farm is not too far away. Um, and so there's some possibilities there as well. That's not a bad so, idea thinking of the incarnation parking lot too, which is the wetlands. That's over. right. They could, yeah. we wouldn't have to pave anything if they would allow people to park there and access a trail, a trailhead there. Yeah. It could be a yeah. wonderful I'm, cooperative arrangement. There actually is a trail, because uh, I walked through there. Um, I mean, a trail that people are walking on. There's mm -hmm. a footpath, sort of. Okay. Um, uh, All right, but any... going, going back to the ERT, uh, if you, if, with, with your, uh, okay, I would approach Jean Davies and ask her if she'd be interested in doing this. They, and, and I can send you the website where they list all the ERTs that they've done in the past. And you can see what came of those. Um, I think that's might a great idea. Doing, send it to Bonnie and we'll yes, see I'll do what that. it entails and, and you know, what the time frame is and the yes, commitment. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Okay, great. Send it to all of us, but yeah. I will, definitely, yeah. Okay. Is there any other business to come before the committee? Can I just say one quick thing with each of the subcommittees, I think it's gonna be really key that as a part of your final report to council, you talk about who is gonna maintain whatever your responsible group is. Because one of the concerns of the council, and I know of staff is, um, who's going to be maintaining the trails, who's going to be maintaining X, who's going to be maintaining Y, because we are so short staffed doing what we do now. If you keep adding it just, unless there's more bodies, but I know Dan would agree with me. I don't see the council adding staff. So somehow you got to address that in your final reports. That's all. Thanks, Cindy. That is great advice. And that's why we kept putting forth these 501c3 models in the Holcomb farm, in the Newton community farm. I don't know yet about Massaro farm. The town does not provide any of the costs yep. or the maintenance. These are self-sustaining entities. And that's where Paul Lazella's document, Mike, can really help us again too. They yep. generate their own funds. 
the farmer on site maintains, you know, provides security and maintains the kind of uh, the, the scenario there. And that's why that's going to be an important part of, of what we present to the community. They've made it, loud, you know, their feelings very clear. And I understand the, what saying. How do you just have, uh, one little quick thing on the Masaro Farm website? One of the things they listed was they have a certain amount of uh, solar power as well as so something that could happen at the Keisha farm as well. Out of, out of curiosity, how do you have a five, how do you apply for a 501c3 if this property is going to be used for multiple uses? For example, you know, if there's a sports field, I mean, how do you, do, can you break it up how you write it? Because that would be the town responsibility to handle a soccer field. So if it's if we're using multiple uses, how do you apply for a 501c3? Good question. Uh, I think they would be separate. The 501c3 would cover the farming, community gardens, open space maybe. Can you do that if it's if it's if it was purchased, the land was purchased as a whole. It wasn't, it wasn't um it wasn't divided up. I, I think. Uh, that has to be looked into further. Mm -hmm. um, Tara, I will definitely um, talk to the town attorney and see if, if he can give me guidance. I mean, usually you really need an attorney who's an expert at 501c3s, but yeah, Ken yeah. might be able to at least give me some thoughts. Right, right. Because right now the models that we've looked at have been used for community farming and farming, not soccer yeah. fields and, and multiple uses. Well, I, I would tell you that if if they are able to divide it up, it was always my understanding that the youth programs that would be using the field would it's almost like a pay to play scenario okay. so that that piece would be maintained by the program. So like if youth football wants to use the field, then, you know, they pay a thousand dollars a year to have access to that field and soccer, maybe they pay more because they play more or whatever. Okay. But, if that was kind of the way, uh, and I don't think any of the youth programs would fight that if they had this beautiful new field to play on and it was shared equitably. Okay. Because you know, that's probably, another concern that, that also came up that many people said that there are fields in town, but they don't feel as though they're maintained properly. So that-, no, that they're was, not. I remember that coming up too. So that's, yep. that's a good point. Yep, you're right. I think one of the big faults with the, the fields that we have in town, most of them are not engineered in the first place. Right. And and that's that's the kind of thing that if you had a new field, you'd do. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Right. So Tara raises a very uh, a, a very important that's question. And Bonnie, you'll get the answer, but the the there might be ways for the farm to fund the field. You know, I, I mean, there's there's possible ways to monetize a, the barn, for example, barn rental. So the relationship between those two things are going to be very important. That is something we'll have to know as we're thinking about usage. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, next meeting is February seventh at five, but subcommittees should should proceed on on their own. So Mike is going to chair the recreation one. Pam, are you going to chair or the um, the gardening and farming, or would you? Jim is far more knowledgeable than I <laughs> with all of that. Yeah. I was going to nominate Pam to be the oh. chair. <laughs> co-chair, co co-chair. Co-chairs work. All right, and Tara, you'll I do, would do it under community. those circumstances, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> do we have any public comment? Is someone raising their hand? Or is that just my mouse? No, that's just my mouse. Is there anybody, any members of the public who would like to comment? All right, so when we meet next time, hopefully we will all have um, some reports to make, mm -hmm. uh, progress made. And um, what am I sharing with you now? Do you wanna see those documents that were on the screen? I can share all of those. I can share Susan Reed's letter. Yeah. Um, and I can share again the uh, access on Google to the University of Hartford report. And right, it, with all the comments, too. And all the comments. Yeah. And, 
and all the comments in the report. Okay, sounds good. All right. All right. There's no other business. How about a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. Second. Second. Thank you to Dan O'Connor. Really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. All right. Talk to you all soon. Happy and healthy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank bye you. all. Yeah. See you soon, Dan. Bye, 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 bye.